If you're struggling with the literature review, if you're overwhelmed by all the different research papers that you have to read, if you're struggling to even understand where to get started with the literature review, how to structure things, how to organize it, then in this video I'm going to share with you three insanely simple steps to an excellent literature review. And this is going to work regardless of the field that you're in, whether you're in exact sciences and you're doing quantum physics or biology, or whether you're in social sciences and you're doing anthropology, or whatever other field you're in, these three insanely simple tips will show you exactly how to do an amazing literature review. So let's dive right in. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers regularly publish research papers in top journals. And the literature review is probably the biggest struggle that all of my new clients have. When people come to me for help, they always struggle with the literature review. 99% of the people that I work with. And it's understandable because, you know, there are so many different papers that you need to read. How do you organize all that information? How do you even find the right papers to read? And how do you know that you've actually read enough, right? All of these questions might be currently going through your head at the moment. So that's why, you know, in this video, I want to outline for you three really insanely crazy simple steps that you need to follow in this exact order to write an excellent literature review. The first step is to find the right text. And this sounds simple but it's really really important because if you find the wrong text on the wrong topic, maybe they're too old, they don't contain the information that you're looking for, you're going to be wasting a lot of time reading them and it, you're not going to produce a good literature review because you've read something that isn't relevant to your topic. So this is key and you shouldn't overlook it. You must do it first, find the right text. Now, how do you do that? Well, let's break this first tip into smaller steps. Now, the first thing that you've got to do is take the topic of your research paper or dissertation and extract keywords from it. So to give you a topic, let's say your research is about um, whether online academic writing courses can help PhD students write research papers faster. Right? So if we have a topic like that, we've got a couple of important keywords in here. We've got online courses, right? Um, we've got PhD students, um, we've got uh, research papers as well, right? These would be the main keywords that we've got. Now, what you know, need to do next is to think about some synonyms because, you know, of course there can be online courses, but it's also online education, right? You could also look for academic writing courses right? And things like that. You might want to look for face-to-face -face courses as well because you might have to compare online and face-to-face, -face, right? So extract the keywords from your topic and then think of synonyms. And then identify the, the correct databases that you're going to be searching. So usually you want to have like a more general database like Web of Science or Scopus or, or Google Scholar and then a more specific one to your field such as PubMed or ERIC if you're in the education field, right? And then you want to also specify the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Right? Because obviously when you start putting these keywords into the search engine, you're just going to get everything, right? And you don't have time and you shouldn't read everything. It's just a waste of time, right? So think carefully what your inclusion and exclusion criteria are. To give you an example, maybe you want to limit yourself just to experimental papers and you don't want any review papers. Or maybe you want to exclude books. Maybe you want to limit yourself to a certain geographical region, let's say just to Europe, because that's where your study is based, right? So think about these inclusion and exclusion criteria, because they will help you later on to identify the right text. And then you want to put these uh, keywords together into what is called search strings, right? And you want to use operators like and, but, or to match the words together. So you could you could search for online courses and PhD students, for example. So this will only give you papers that include these two things, online courses and PhD students, right? And you could have online courses and PhD students, but 
masters, meaning that we're going to exclude any masters students from the search results, right? And then once you've done it, you're going to have a long list of papers and then you want to apply your inclusion and exclusion criteria to narrow down the list to something more manageable and more relevant, right? And then one extra tip here, once you've read all these papers, right, and you've found like the most relevant ones as well, you want to look at the reference lists of those most relevant papers and then see if they are referring to some extra papers that you have missed, right? And this is called snowballing, right? So this can allow you to find some extra papers that are important and relevant to your study through looking at the reference list of the papers that you have found. Now you've found your papers and you've applied your initial inclusion and exclusion criteria to them. So the next step is to obviously read them, right? And here's where a lot of people get it wrong as well. What a lot of PhD students and researchers do is to read the whole paper from start to finish every single word. That's going to really slow you down if you want to do it for every single paper because you're going to have, you know, a hundred papers, maybe even more to read. If you want to read every single one from start to finish, that's going to take you ages. So what you want to do is identify, you know, the most important parts of the paper that you need to read in order to get the gist of the information for, you know, the initial literature review. So typically, you know, depending on your purpose with this literature review, what you want to probably do is, you know, is understand the research gap and the aim of the paper. And then you want to briefly skim through the methodology and maybe take notes on like, you know, what or who was studied, what main method did they use to study uh, this thing or people and, and how did they analyze the data. And then you want to skim through the results and then really focus on the, on the conclusion as well because that's where they highlight the most important pieces of information. And before I said that, like, depending on the purpose of why you're reading, because this is really important, because we read for different reasons. For example, let's say you're, you might be reading the literature in order to find the research gap. Well, if that's your purpose, then the way you're going to read those papers is, is very different because if your purpose is to find the research gap, then you probably want to look at the limitations of the previous studies, the suggestions that they make for uh, future research, and potentially the research gap that that paper itself identified. Everything else is kind of irrelevant. Similarly, you know, maybe you've already written a little bit of your literature review and you're stuck because, you know, you're missing a key fact right or a key example so what you want to do is just like read the papers to find that specific example and in order to do that you don't have to read the paper from start to finish right so in terms of step two reading the papers remember never read them from start to finish i can't remember when was the last time i read my paper from start to finish right and nobody really does that identify why you're reading and then find that part of the paper in order to identify that piece of information. And then of course, if you need to supplement your reading to understand things a little bit better, you can dive deeper into, let's say, the methodology of that paper if it's useful. But for example, the literature review of the paper, that's most of the time useless. There's no point in reading that because every paper on that specific topic is just going to probably repeat the same literature review or very, very similar one. And they're going to refer to very similar papers. So there's no point in spending a lot of time reading those 1,000 or 2,000 words of the literature review. Now we come to the insanely simple step number three, which is to structure and to write the literature review which for a lot of PhD students and researchers is actually the most difficult step. Because now imagine you've got all these papers and all this information in your head and maybe in your notes, hopefully somewhere nicely organized. But how do you actually put it into a paper? How do you actually write it? That's the struggle. So in terms of structuring your literature review, there are basically four main ways in which you can structure it. Number one, um, and it, this is the most common one, you can structure it from general to specific. Meaning you start with the most general idea, for example, it could be definition of a key concept, and then you go more specific and more specific and more specific, right? That's usually 
how, how things are done, from general to specific. Now, another way of organizing your literature review, and by the way, you know, you, it doesn't mean you have to organize your whole literature review following one of these principles. You can organize one of the sections of the literature review following one principle, and another section is going to be organized slightly differently, because it all depends on what the purpose of a given literature review section is, right? So, the second way to organize your literature review would be, for example, chronologically. This is really good if you're trying to present the development of a certain idea, right? Or how, you know, the methodology has developed, how a certain process has developed over the years, how the research in your field has developed over the years. Then you organize it from the oldest to the newest chronologically. And a third way in which you can also organize the literature review is by, you know, key disciplines. So let's say if you're looking at a specific idea or topic from different perspectives or different disciplines, you can organize your literature review like that as well, where, you know, first you're going to look at this concept from the psychological perspective, then you're going to look at it from the um, economics perspective, and then maybe you're going to bring in the neuroscientific perspective, right? So these are the three main ways in which you can structure your literature review. Now, apart from the structure, what you need to pay attention to as well when you're writing the literature review is avoiding to be descriptive, or in other words, you want to be critical. What does this actually mean? Well, what I see a lot initially with the clients that come to me for help writing research papers is that they will describe a study in a lot of detail. For example, they might say where the study was conducted, what the topic of that study was, who was studied, and things like that. But 90% of the time, this information is irrelevant. What is really important is the results of the study, and more importantly, how these results relate to your main argument in the literature review right? To the main point that you're trying to make in a given paragraph. So then don't spend too much time, you know, presenting the topic, the methodology of a particular study. Tell us what the results were and how they link to your main point in a given paragraph. Now, granted, if the topic of a paragraph, if the main idea of a paragraph or of a section is to show us um, you know, for example, the different methodologies that were used by different researchers, then of course you're going to describe or present the main features of the methodology of the different papers, right? But it all depends on the purpose, so that's how you create a coherent argument in your literature review. And when it comes to a coherent argument, what you of course have to do as well is to link your ideas together. So another mistake that I see a lot of my clients initially make is that they, they start a lot of sentences with the name of the author. So they say, you know, Kichkoviak showed that, uh, Gonzalez argued that, you know, similarly, Kichkoviak also points out, and then in addition, Gonzalez also mentions that. You know, and every sentence just kind of starts with the author. But what this does is completely break the coherence of the text, you know? Instead, what you wanna do is start a new sentence with a link to the preceding idea. So rather than start with the name of the author, start with a link to the preceding idea by, for example, repeating a key word from the previous sentence, using a synonym of that word. You can also use words like this, another, second, to refer back to what was said in the previous sentence, right? And of course, then you can also use some linking words like however, for example, and so on. But what are the most important thing to have a coherent story is not to start most of your sentences with the name of the author, but to start them with an idea that clearly connects to the previous sentence. So to recap, the three insanely simple steps to write a really good literature review are finding the right text, Number two, reading them effectively. And number three, writing your literature review by structuring it properly and having a coherent argument in it. Now, if you want more personalized, more in-depth help with your thesis, writing research papers, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to go over your main challenges, pinpoint what you want to achieve, and then we'll outline a personalized plan for you that will help you to achieve these goals much faster. And the link to schedule that free consultation is right below this video.